Hello guys and welcome after a long time to a new Armory 3D tutorial. This is a start of a new series and it is recommended for beginners. To start off in this year I wanted to create something for the beginners and then keep level up. In this video we will create from bottom up, a first person controller without any scripts that are already programmed. We want to create ours from scratch. I hope you will like it. In the end your node tree will look like this but please don't get scared of this site. It is not that hard if we go step by step. I still recommend you to watch my absolute beginner series if you just downloaded Armory and don't know much about the engine. For this video I use a very simple scene with just a ground and sun lamp. Nothing more. The first step is to create our player and its components. For the player we use a capsule shape because I think it looks pretty neat and it is suitable for a first person controller. We add here on top a sphere and edit it to a capsule. To edit properly we have to go to viewpoint and switch to right. We go in edit mode to modify our sphere. We want to scale down our sphere a little. Press S and then type 0.7. Make sure you turn on the snapping tool for better results. Switch to wireframe mode and deselect with the middle mouse button the under half part of U sphere. The other part that is selected gets dragged to the top. For this press first G and then Z. Now type 2.5 for the height. We are almost done. We need to change the origin point of our player object. For this go to object and change origin point to geometry. To normalize the object's scale and rotation hit Ctrl and A and select rotation and scale. Our player is done. Now we need to add in the physics tab a rigid body to it. Turn on dynamic to make our player falling down. For the collision bounds we select capsule. Set the friction to zero for preventing the player sliding around. And here set the angular factor everything to zero for preventing to tilt. For the ground we also add rigid body. You only need to turn off dynamic. We need now to create the components for the player. First set the blender cursor to the player by selecting first the player. Now we add a cube empty under object and then empty. And also here we set the scale to 0.7. After scaling set the empty to the top. This object supposed to be the head of the player where we can add items in front of it. Select first the head and then shift select the player. Now you should see that the head object is orange. Now hit shift and P to parent it to the player object. Now here we can see that the head is a child of the player. We did it correctly. Select the head and set the cursor to it. Now we create another empty but this time a simple plane axis. Also here first select the plane axis and then shift select the head. Now hit shift P again and then set the parent. And here we can see that the plane axis is a child of the head. This should supposed to be the camera origin. For the last object we add our camera. Right now it is facing the wrong direction. Hit Alt R to reset the rotation. Under tools we can rotate the camera 90 degrees on the X axis. Our 
under the camera tab we can change the field of view. Set it to something like 65 or 70. And also here select first the camera and then shift select the camera origin. Parent it and we are done. To start programming in Logic Nodes Editor we need first to create a trait to our player object. With the player selected we go under the object tab and create under armory traits a logic node trait. Since the new version we can already create here our node tree. Drag a new window out and then switch to the logic nodes editor to finally start editing. We start now off with the player movement. We can add nodes here on top or easier by hitting Shift and A. We control our player movement by our keyboard input. If you don't know about event nodes then please watch my videos about events. It's a lot easier if you are a complete beginner. To make our player move we use the translate object node. We can leave the target object blank because it automatically uses the object that the trait belongs to. For the direction that our player should travel we use a vector math node to calculate the direction. For the calculation we use multiply with floats. The direction we want to go when W is pressed is forward. So in that case we add a transform to vector node to get the transform looking direction. Add a get object transform node to get the player's transform. So now the player always travels to his looking direction, if W being pressed. We can now add a float node and set our player move speed. Set it to something like 0.1. For moving backwards we need to know that it goes in the negative direction, that means we need to make the looking direction for moving backwards negative. Here we can just change to the S key. To make the looking direction negative just duplicate the math node and set the vector everything to negative 1. If we play our game we can move forward and backwards. Let's do it now for left and right. The same process goes for left and right. The left side is negative so we need to set it negative again. Here we just change the key. The only difference here is that we need to get the right direction instead of the look direction. Duplicate the transform node and set it to right. The right side is positive so we just have to regular connect it to the transform vector. 
Here also don't forget to change the key after duplicating. Now as you can see, it is working. We can move in all directions. To keep everything neat we can frame the player movement with Ctrl and J. Here in the properties we can change color, name and font size. So now we will create the mouse look. This is a bit more easier to understand. We start adding nodes next to our player movement frame. We need to add a on update node. Here we want to add a rotate object node to constantly rotate our camera. Now here it's important to set the object our camera origin because we want to rotate our camera not the player. Also we need to connect a vector to the node. We only want to rotate our camera on the x-axis. That means up and down. To get the mouse input we add get mouse movement node. We obviously need the Y output because we want to look up and down if we move our mouse up and down on the Y axis. If we play, we can already look up and down but it is way too fast. Here we can connect float values. That means we can add a float node to set the sensitivity like we did before with the movement speed. For the sensitivity set something like 0.05 but it needs to be negative because else the movement will be inverted and we don't want that. This is a lot better but we can smooth out the movement with another value. We can add get application time node to get the delta time between the frames. More details about delta time can be found in the description if you are interested. We can now multiply the two values and connect the result to the mouse input. This looks perfect. Now the same thing for left and right. For left and right we want the whole player to be rotated instead of just the camera. We can simply duplicate the vector and rotation node. Make sure you leave the object input blank. Like I said we want the player to be rotated. Here we want to rotate on the Z axis. We simply connect from the X output to the Z input. This is perfect, we can now look around. There is one problem. We cannot look fully around because of the cursor. Let's fix that. Also here you can frame this in.
If we press the right mouse button we want to toggle the cursor. Select the timing to start it and key to right. There is a node that we need called alternate output. This is very useful in situations like this. If we click the right button first time, the first outputs gets executed, but if the key is being pressed for the second time the second output gets executed. With set cursor state node we can control to visibility of the cursor. If the box is checked then it is unvisible. First time we press on the mouse we want to hide it. This is very good but we still can look around if the mouse is visible. We can also fix that. We need a on init node to create something in the beginning. We add a set property node to set a property like some of you did in the Blender game engine. You can give any name here you want. The property type here is a boolean. That means yes or no. We can check with this property if it is locked or not. We set it to false because it is first not locked. As soon as we lock our cursor we want to set our property to true. Also if we unlock our cursor we want to set it to false. With this property we can check when we want to be able to look around. To check if we can look around we add a branch node. So now we check here if the cursor is locked. If it's true then the objects should rotate. We will use here the get property node to get the true or false state. As you can see we can only look around if we lock our mouse. There is one more last problem about the mouse look. There is no stop for looking down or up. We will fix that fast. Here we will constantly check with the update node if the rotation exceeds the max rotation. With the gate node we can check if the rotation is too high or too low. With the get object rotation node we can get the rotation of our camera. Keep in mind we only want to check the x axis rotation and not every axis. With the separate node we can break the rotation into three axes. Connect the x-axis to the first input to check the value with another value. For the comparison mode we need greater equal. This means if the x rotation is equal or higher than the given value the node gets executed. For the value we use 1.5. Instead of 90 degree we need to set it in 1.5 radians. If the rotation is equal or higher, the set rotation node should be executed. Here we add a vector node. If we look to high, we want to set the rotation to the furthest point we can look instead of going further back.
Now we have to do the same thing for looking down. We can copy everything except for the update and get rotation node. Here we set the float value negative and change the comparison to less than mode. Now it works properly. We can limit it look up and down. Here I recommend you to frame everything in for better overview, to speed up your working time. I really hope that I helped you in any ways. If you enjoy the video please like the video. If there are any questions please let me know in the comments. Make sure to check out the GitHub page in the description. In the future video we will add elements like running with stamina and jumping for example. See you next time.